Hello Akroiso e Trigaron. Hello and welcome to Trigaron. So today we're going to look at highwaymen and uh, gold and um, a possible elephant. So you join us here in the churchyard of St. Caron's Church. St. Caron was of lowly birth, but through his uh, honour and so on, became very well known, and very noble, um, and actually went to war against the Romans, apparently. So this church is in his honour and he's believed to be buried in uh, Trigaron. So Trigaron, where are we? And what can I tell you about Trigaron? So Trigaron got its town charter in 1292. It was famous for its mart and agriculture. It was said at one point 30,000 cattle passed through here and of course it being Wales, sheep and so on and so forth. From that time there was a mart in Trigaron. It said that 30,000 cattle passed through here in a year at one point, actually before the advent of the railway. And it, there were so many cattle and so on passing through here that they actually created their own banknotes, the Aberystwyth and Tregaron Bank. And the banknotes were denominated by how many black sheep were on the note. So if it was one pound, you would have one sheep, two sheep was two pounds, and so on. And you can actually find one of these banknotes in Ceredigion Museum. Ceredigion Museum in Aberystwyth, absolutely worth a visit. So Tregaron's quite a small town, but it's a very proud town and it's very proudly Welsh as well. In, I think his name was John Speed's map, it is mentioned as the Welsh town in Ceredigion. Aberystwyth and Lampeter, and the fourth one escapes me, get a mention, but they were Norman towns and Tregaron was Welsh. And it remains that Tregaron is still a very Welsh community. There are a lot of people in the area whose first language is genuinely Welsh. And part of that proud heritage is that in 2020, Tregaron was supposed to hold the National Eisteddfod. Now, if you've watched my videos, you're probably going, oh my goodness me, she's talking about these Eisteddfods again. But I can't emphasize what a big part of the Welsh culture these Eisteddfods are. So in the Eisteddfod, you start out, you do your recitation or your singing or your dancing. Uh, in your local area and if you win you go through to the county and then you reach the National Eisteddfod and in 2022 Tregaron held the National Eisteddfod. It should have been 2020 but unfortunately we all know what happened in 2020 uh, so it didn't happen but when it did my goodness did it happen in a celebratory fashion. The whole of the county of Ceredigion was just covered in banners and Mr Irth who's their little character, a little red white and green man it was just a wonderful time to be in Ceredigion because it was just a celebration. And actually the Eisteddfod is going on at the moment, not too far away, it's in Carmarthenshire this, uh, this year. I believe it's in Llandovery, but don't quote me on that. And Carmarthenshire don't seem to have put as much pomp and circumstance onto it as uh, Ceredigion have. So well done Tregaron for that one. It's quite a small town, uh, but it has everything that you could possibly need. You've got little shops, you've got takeaways, you've got a pub. Uh, you've got a butcher shop and it's just got a lovely feel about it. It's always bustling. It's a really lovely place to come to. And they do call it the gateway to the Cambrian Mountains. So if you're a walker or you're a cyclist, then this is an excellent spot for you to start your adventures and uh, go and explore the Cambrian Mountains and oh, well, all around the area. Strata Florida is not far away and Pentre Bach, home of Sally Malley, isn't far away either. So one not to miss. Behind me is a statue of Henry Richard, one of the very notable residents of Tregaron. He was born in 1812. He was the son of a minister and in fact became a minister himself. But he had a greater goal in life and became a member of parliament. I think he actually in the end became a member of parliament for Merthyr Tydfil. But his most notable thing is that he was a member of the Peace Society for 40 years. And he also had an anti-slavery stance. So quite the man. In fact, He's so celebrated that the school is actually named after him. It's called Usgol Henry Richard, Usgol being the Welsh word for school. Sadly, he passed away in 1888, but as you can see, there's a statue to commemorate him just in the middle of the square. So here we have a much disputed character in Welsh history. This is Tom Sean Catty. Tom is the Welsh version of the name Tom and his mother was Catty Jones. So he took the name Catty from his mother because he was the illegitimate son of we're not entirely sure who. There was a, there's a few suggestions online as to who it might have been saying his mother was weighing favour with, with certain gentlemen. So the reason that he's disputed is because some people refer to him as the Welsh Robin Hood and uh, 
some people think that he was just a, a bit of a downright scoundrel. So one of the stories of Tom Sean Catty is that uh, he had been on a bit of a robbing spree and he'd heard he was staying somewhere and heard that uh, the people in the inn were going to try and rob him. Another highwayman was going to go and rob him. And so he tucked away all his ill-gotten gains and filled up his saddlebag as if he was filling it with the money and so on. And then he rode off and the person that he suspected might follow him did follow him. So he threw his uh, saddlebag, which supposedly contained the money, into a pond and the gentleman went after it, at which point Tom, Tom Sean Catty stole his horse and rode off into the distance. Another tale is that uh, he stole a farmer's horse and uh, he took it to his house. And when the farmer came over to his house, he was greeted by a beggar that he didn't recognise. And he gave this beggar his horse and his whip. This beggar was very helpful to him. Um, but what he didn't realise was that beggar was actually Tum himself. And Tum took off with the horse and the whip. And did he run into the sunset? No, he did not. He actually went to the farmer's house, went to the farmer's wife and said he was kidnapped and that she, there was a ransom and she needed to pay. And so the farmer's wife gave him money. So he made off with the horse, the money and the whip. Past his life, Tum is actually doing wonderful things. There's an award in the local primary school uh, in his honour and there are various walking trails that relate to Tum Sean Catty and he's actually celebrated internationally. So here we are in one of the most notable buildings in Tregaron. This is the Talbot Hotel or a Talbot as it's often known, the Talbot. Uh, it is a, an inn, varies on the age of it. I believe this inn actually is 19th century but there was an older inn on the site. Talbot has actually been in the Michelin Guide in 1919, 2019 and 2021. And I just want to point out how food is coming along in Herodigion at the moment and the exciting venues that there are to eat at. For example, if you come to Dugaran, you've got the Talbot, which is in the Michelin Guide. You have a venue in Anislas, which has Michelin star. And you have SY23 in Aberystwyth, which has a Michelin star. So there really is a spectrum of foods here in Ceredigion and it's really lovely to see them celebrated in such a noticeable way. Now if you've heard of Tregaron you've probably heard of one story and it involves this inn. So in 1848 Batty's Menagerie came to town and they brought with them an elephant and sadly there's some discussion as to whether the elephant was poisoned or whether the elephant drunk poisoned water Whatever happened, unfortunately, the elephant died. And consequently, the elephant is said to have been buried in the gardens of the Talbot. Now, in 2011, I think it was through Aberystwyth University or some local archaeological group, the gardens were actually dug and they didn't find signs of the elephant. Now, that is not to, you know, say that the story is a, is a porky pie because there is a discussion that it actually wasn't like the backyard that the elephant was buried in. A long time has passed since then, so that elephant could be anywhere. And I firmly believe the elephant is here somewhere. So behind me is Rhiannon and the Welsh Gold Centre. I remember when uh, the Hublets were in primary school, one of them, I think it was Miss Minnie Hubnut, the magpie, came and visited and was absolutely smitten with the place. It was established in 1971 and uh, it deals in Welsh gold specifically, which is supposed to be, not that I'm biased, the best gold in the world. Now, as Mr. Hubnut didn't buy me a car a couple of days ago, maybe we could stop in here and get a little something. Tregaron, as I've mentioned, is very proud of its culture and its history, and uh, a lot of the events reflect that. So once a year you have Tregar Rock, which is a music festival. I've actually just missed it, an all weekend uh, music festival. As well as that, you have trotting races. Trotting races are big around here, both in Tregaron, uh, I think there's some towards Cardigan, and in Synodin. Trotting races, if you don't know, you have your pony and you have a little trap, which is a small cart um, that Minnie Hubnut hadn't actually seen before, was horrified that people would, would ride on, but it's a very tiny little cart that you put behind your pony and go as fast as you possibly can. So those are some of the events that they have up here in Tregaron. So it's not historical, not really cultural, but this gets an honourable mention because this is Tregaron takeaway and it is famous for the pizza burger, which is calorific but utterly delicious. Uh, it's pizza dough, 
that encases kebab meat, cheese, burgers, and uh, it's made up like a pizza. It's about this thick and it is just divine. So wrong and yet so right. So as we travelled towards Course Caron, I'll tell you a little bit more about Tom Sean Catty. So he had a very interesting way of um, seducing the woman that he was interested in. He actually, um, she was a widow, I think it was of the Sheriff of Carmarthen, and he actually initially robbed her and stole all her jewels. And then, um, because he wanted to woo her, gave the jewels back. She wasn't impressed, neither was her father. So uh, Tum was not put off by this and decided that he would continue his wooing by going up to her window, climbing in and threatening to cut her hand off. Uh, at which point she said she would marry him, but actually she made an honest, uh, honest woman of him, an honest man of him, and uh, I believe he became a justice of the peace and lived a very quiet life. Uh, in the meantime, before he was made an honest man, he was awaiting a pardon and ran off to Geneva, of all places. And as is often the case in these Welsh stories, at one point he was hiding out in a cave um, because he was awaiting his pardon. But yeah, Tum finished his life in a peaceful and honourable fashion. The reason that things are slightly vague with Tum Sean Catty is that he was born in 1530, so we're talking a long time ago, and his story has been told and retold and retold with time. I believe George Borrow was not impressed with Tom Sean Catty and did just think that he was a little bit of a cad, but most people sing his praises. And one of the notable authors who sings his praises is somebody called T. Shell Jones. Now, if you've studied Welsh, um, and Welsh literature particularly, T. Shell Jones is a very proud Welsh writer and he writes a lot about the culture and the historical figures of Wales. Um, well worth, if, if you can, to have a read of some of his books. So you join us here at the very beautiful Cors Caron, or Tregaron Bog. These pools are the beginning of the River Tyvi. The source is a little way away, but this is where the journey really begins for the River Tyvi. Uh, there are lots of walks along here. Uh, there is a varying distances and for varying abilities. There is actually, as you can see, an accessible walk, which is fantastic. And uh, you can get to the bog hide as well, which is well worth doing because Course Caron is noted for its wildlife. It is three raised peat bogs. Uh, I think the site is about 3.3 miles in total. And I believe it's a site of scientific, special scientific interest because of the wildlife that they have here. The most notable character is the red kite. I remember, and the red kite is a wildlife success story here in Wales. I remember back in the late 80s, we were in Poppet, which is near Cardigan. And my dad said, look at that bird. And I looked into the sky and there it was with its little forked tail. And he said, do you know what that is? And I didn't know what that was at that point in time. And he said, that is a red kite. He said, there's only 80 mating pairs left of those in Wales now. I was like, oh crikey, so that is rare. But now they're prolific. They are everywhere and it's a real success story. The red not here. Not, not right now. We did actually see one in Tregaron, <laughs> notable currently by their absence. But yes, the red kite is a real success story. And they are here at Course Caron. As well as that, you've got curlews, you've got otters, you've got dragonflies. It's just a I don't know what that is. Yeah, that's a very strange sounding tractor. We're just going to wait and see now. There it is. <laughs> so yes, it's an area that is absolutely full of wildlife. There are lots of hides along here. And if you wanted to do a big walk, you could do a big walk. Uh, when we had the hublets here, they didn't want to do a big walk. So we did the boardwalk walk and it was fantastic. It was so exciting and so interesting. Such an interesting landscape as well, because it's flat and we're not used to flat landscape around here. It's worth mentioning the railway while we're here. The Manchester and Milford Railway. I am sure my railway enthusiast will correct me if I'm wrong, which I probably am. Ha! Um, the Milford, Manchester and Milford Railway skirted Course Caron from 1866 to 1964. I think this was it. I believe it was. Makes sense. This is skirting the bog, isn't it? And it's straight. So 
yeah, that would make sense for that to be the railway. But yes, in 1965, unfortunately, uh, the River Brennig has actually had some um, works done because it does have those one in a hundred events where there is significant flooding and there was flood damage to the railway station in 1965 that meant the end of the railway. But to be honest, at that point, um, a lot of the railway lines this way were coming to the end of their life. For example, the Aberystwyth to Carmarthen line, most of that was closing down at that point in time. So now it's a lovely walk and uh, we're just going to go and have a little mooch around and then we will go for lunch. Now, actually, this is a European special area of conservation and not a site of science, special scientific interest. It does the same kind of thing, so it just means that the area is protected. This is one of three raised peat bogs that have been formed over 12,000 years, and it's said to be one of the most untouched peat bogs in the UK. Um, full of water birds, and the interesting thing that I didn't mention earlier, and I was hoping to spot today because it's quite sunny, is lizards. I absolutely love lizards, but we haven't seen any so far. But we should carry on. But look, look at this boardwalk. It's perfect if you've got a buggy or a wheelchair. It's, it's very accessible. I'm really impressed. It has had some renovation work. When we were here in March, look at that just dabbling. Beautiful. Um, it has had some works done since we were here in March last year but it's a wonderful spot. We were lucky enough to have an Airbnb, which I think is up in the hills just over there somewhere, um, which was very nice. I'm sure we can ping the information up, ping, on the, uh, on the video so that you can see where we stayed, because that was lovely. But it's a really nice area to visit. It does have toilets, which I know is very important to some people. Me, I have a bladder the size of a, a little, um, I don't know, something very small. So having toilets and they're open all the time is very, very important. But what a glorious and what an alien landscape for Wales. I mean, goodness me, it's, it's flat. So you join us here at Riverbank Cafe and Farm Shop, which is literally just outside Dragan. If you pass a school Henry, Henry Richard, uh, then it's along the same road. And what a wonderful little spot. We've never been here before. And we were just doing, you know, the Google thing for places to eat in Dragan. And it's absolutely superb. Um, we've just had, well, Ian's just had a, a Welsh breakfast. And I know when we commented on breakfast before, you said, it's Welsh breakfast, it should have lava bread. And it had lava bread and Ian even ate it, which is incredible. If you don't know, lava is a type of seaweed. And you can either have it very basically processed, so it's kind of green. I don't want to say sludge. It's quite, it's kind of green sludge on your plate. Or you can have it with oats and it kind of, changes it a little bit makes it a little bit more palatable if you're not brave so Ian had the English breakfast and uh, they process their own meat here in Pentra brine meats so you had a particularly nice sausage uh, bacon egg and everything you'd expect on a fried breakfast and I had a ploughman's with cheese which was gorgeous the bread was particularly nice uh, the beetroot was del everything was delicious just one of those delicious dinners and then somehow we managed to have ice cream as well and they do a chocolate sundae brownie and it's got homemade brownies in it. And the brownies are exactly what you want from a brownie. It's kind of a little bit crisp on the top and then squashy in the middle. And they use Mario's ice cream, which is lovely. We were sat next to a fish pond. We were watching the damselflies floating about doing their um, shenanigans that they do at this time of year. We were watching the water boatmen skid across the top and we were watching the fish generally. Um, it's a beautiful place. Toilets are lovely and clean. And they've also got a farm shop where they sell their meat. The meat looks absolutely delicious. Uh, and they've got all kinds of preserves and teas. They have a tea that's good for your voice. If you drink it, it's supposed to be very good for your vocal cords. So I don't know if that's true or not, but it smells absolutely beautiful. And they have a play park. So if you're bringing the children, um, they can have a lovely time as well. It's really, really beautiful, peaceful spot. And as well as this, they've got a little retreat here, a wellness retreat that uh, does vibration therapy. So absolutely worth a visit i would say wouldn't you mr hubner <laughs> you get to be the thumb today so you join us here in the hide at uh, course caron and my goodness me what a view what a view you see the canada geese and you've got some ponies out there absolutely beautiful what a lovely place to come and spend a quiet moment we are the only people in here at the moment, otherwise I wouldn't be talking in here. <laughs> um, but just a tidbit of information from Mr. Hubnut before I conclude this video. 
So um, the really exciting thing that we saw on our walk just now were um, damselflies and dragonflies. And this is from Mr. Hubnut. The way that you can tell the difference between a damselfly and a dragonfly is that when they're stopped, a damselfly will have its wings like this and a dragonfly will have its wings like this. And that's how you can tell the difference between the two. Um, this is a beautiful little hide. It's got lots of information about the bog itself and how it was formed and the wildlife that you can see. What a lovely place to come and spend some time. So I think that's probably a good place to end our video on Tregaron and Course Caron. I hope you've enjoyed it. I was quite nervous about doing this one because I haven't done a Miss Hubnut video in a while. So I hope it's been informative. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, and I hope you watch a bit more of my content. Hopefully there'll be more coming out very, very soon. But uh, Tregaron, an amazing little town. It's been going since 1292. It's proudly Welsh. It's got so much history, so many characters, and it's absolutely worth a visit for a lovely cup of tea and little cafes and whatnot. They're in the village, a mooch about the little shops, and an explore of the surrounding area because, my goodness me, that view is just beautiful. And it's absolutely scorching hot today, and I naively thought it'd be quite cool. But thank you for joining us in this video, and hopefully you'll see us in another Miss Hubnut video soon. Bye everybody. Hoi